Hello and welcome back to another show and tell video. My name is Megan and I am the face behind Toe Creations. Uh, for those of you who are new, this is about a once a month video series that I do to show my grandma all the things that I have been working on. Uh, those things being primarily crochet, knitting, sewing, and here recently yarn dyeing. So, welcome. <laughs> Today I have some um, very few finished objects. Uh, some works in progress and some shop update stuff to to go over so um, as always we're just gonna jump on into it so <clears throat> excuse me I thought I'd do crochet stuff first and the first thing I've done is a placemat and as none of my ends are woven so apologies but the first one I've did is a pattern called autumn leaf which is a free pattern and uh, it is by <clears throat> Robutgomania. It looks like this. It's a chart pattern and I want to say I got this on Pinterest. I'm not really sure. I'll have the link in the show notes. But this is what it looked like. So my my intentions were to make two of these. Um, I used uh, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. And I don't remember the colorway offhand. I want to say it had the word gold in it, but I'm really not sure. But unfortunately, I could only get one out of a skein. So I didn't have enough to make a whole nother one. So this is what I have for now. I thought it turned out really pretty. I really like it. Um, the pattern says to use a what size hook? They used a steel crochet hook and they used thread. Mm -mm. Worsted weight here and I believe I used a G hook and it came out this large. So I thought that was big enough to put a plate on. <laughs> so one day I will get back to Hobby Lobby to get uh, another skein of this color to make to make its matching pair. So, gosh, I have a frog in my throat. So next in the crochet department is a work in progress. This is a big work in progress. It is a Christmas present for my niece and when I saw it, I saw this, it's a blanket. And when I saw this blanket pattern a few months ago, I was like, oh, that's my niece. You know, that's so my niece. And, um, but I never really went further than that. Well then a couple, about a month or two ago, I saw it again and the same thing happened. And I was just like, Megan, you just gotta make this. So I am making the princess versus villain, villains blanket. Um, it was a crochet along through, gosh, I don't have her, the name in front of me. I want to say Two Hearts Crochet. Um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll link it. But <clears throat> basically, it's just a bunch of um, graphs and it's a bunch of princesses. And there's a big uh, castle and you can write their name. And so to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, I have four princesses done. I'm doing 16. <clears throat> I'm doing 16 princesses, a humongous castle, and I'm going to write her name with a princess crown above her name. So, and this is Christmas. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can get this all done. But, so here's the first one. So this is Cinderella. This is my first attempt at corner to corner. I am doing a um, half double crochet. Uh, corner to corner. So there's Cinderella. Pocahontas. Rapunzel. <clears throat> and Tinkerbell. So 
like I said, I'm doing 16 of these and um, I think it's gonna be awesome. The, uh, these squares are roughly a foot, a foot square. So it is going to be a large <laughs> blanket, definitely one she can use for a long time. Um, if you're wondering what the backs look like, <laughs> that might be a project for uh, the pick school pickup line to weave all those in. I'll save that till the end. <laughs> so um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've just been giving little snippets like uh, maybe just showing like the corner and stuff so I'm waiting till it's all done to give the full picture so um, so yeah I'm I'm trying to aim for a square <coughs> a print yeah like a princess a week and um, and I think I'm already behind a week <laughs> I really need to uh, get that in in gear so Okay, so that's about all the crochet stuff I have done. On the knitting side, um, I did some more of those baby hats that I showed in the last video. Um, this is the Skinny Rib Stretchy Baby Hat by Penz's Needles, I believe. Looks like that. Again, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. So little Halloween one orange and black the little top knot and then I did that pumpkin one I told you about that I was gonna do how cute is this I think the next time that I make this I'm going to extend the green down maybe two rows so there's a little bit more green on it but <coughs> so those are cute um, I'm currently working on one more and it is purple and gold I don't know if you, that's coming up it's like a plum purple and a gold um, <coughs> and for those of you who are interested I am making these on a 12 inch circular on a Chowgu 5 millimeter US size 8 needle There is those. I'm hoping to have this hat done today. Um, so, I'm sure I haven't mentioned this yet, but my brother is expecting a baby uh, next month, and <coughs> it's his second child, first boy. So, um, my brother is a diehard Northwestern University fan. And so I thought it was fitting to make a sweater for my new nephew in the Northwestern colors. So I decided to do, which this is all backwards, a flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. Try putting that in there. Looks like that. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Here's some more of the different sizes. Um, I am doing a zero to six month size and I haven't done the sleeves yet but this is what I have so far so Northwestern colors are like this deep purple well I don't know if it's deep really but this purple um, black and white so I just did the stripes on my own and yeah, it's got the, which I don't know if you can tell, because I can't really open the sleeves up, but they've got a little, I guess that's garter stitch is what you call that, detail on the sleeves. This is my very first sweater that I've ever attempted, and <coughs> To be honest, it's sat like this for about a month. I'm just intimidated to do the sleeves. Um, I'm really, I really wish they made a nine inch circular um, in this size. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I believe I did this on an eight as well. I believe the collar and the 
the ribbing here on the bottom was in a size six and I believe the sweater was knit in a size eight. All right, so there's that one. Hold on. Oh, it's been so dusty here. Got a frog in my throat. So my last, I, I call it a finished object. You can call it a half finished if you want, but to me it's, it's a finished object. I finished my sock. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that this is my third attempt at a sock and my first totally finished sock. It fits, it, it, it does everything. So I am so, so excited. Um, this is just a plain Jane vanilla sock. I used Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe. Um, I believe I did seven and a half inches for the foot. I did a Kiss the Partridge, Kiss the Partridge heel, um, which is a short row heel by Shauna Stitches. And then I believe the leg of the sock is six and a half inches, I believe, with a two by two stretchy bind off on the cuff. Um, this yarn is hand dyed by me. Um, the, the toes, heels, and uh, cuff is in the color tart. And then the, the rest of the sock is done up in Midnight Trickster, which is one of my Halloween colors. And I love the way it turned out. <clears throat> so, definitely room for improvement for my second sock, but I am so excited with that I made a sock. <laughs> I'm really feeling accomplished with this. I think I strutted around the house, you know, <laughs> with it. I'm sure my husband is sick of seeing it, but so. Yep. All right. So there's that. And I think that's about all the stuff that I've been working on. Um, <laughs> future stuff is working on that blanket. Um, I'm working on a baby blanket, which I showed maybe one or two videos back that I haven't really touched. I'm working on that. And I'm working on the sweater. And then, um, and I, and then, a a fun little kids toy that I'll I'll kind of leave you in suspense on although it has to deal with Moana the the Disney movie Moana so I'll leave that at that and save that for the next video um, yes I have a craft show this weekend uh, this Saturday it's my first of the year and um, it's at a harvest festival in a small town nearby so I'll be doing that and then yeah at the end of the month I have another craft show a Halloween one that I'm doing and that's all the craft shows I'm doing this this year um, I decided to not do the Christmas one this year and um, kind of just relax a little bit I know it was scheduled the same day as a family uh, Christmas party and I just decided not to bother looking for another one and just enjoy some downtime <laughs> so shop news um, Halloween colorways are now listed in the shop they are now live and ready so I have two colorways and I'm not sure if I've shown these yet so I'll go ahead and show these again if I have I'm sorry uh, the first one is autumn's harvest and it looks like this it's oranges and blacks but it's like that um, these are 100 gram skeins which is roughly 357 yards um, <clears throat> it is on my footsie base which is an 80 20 um, fine, fine highland wool polyamide blend um, the second color I have is midnight trickster which looks like this it's a little blown out from the being outside, but can you hear my ducks? They've got a lot to say. <laughs> they can see me outside and whatever they see me, they run over because they think I have treats for them. 
they've been getting a lot of watermelon lately, so they're kind of spoiled rotten right now. But anyways, here's Midnight Trickster, and as a refresher, this is how it works up. So, <laughs> those are the two Halloween colorways that I have listed. Um, I also have them listed in a set, which part of it's inside. But um, so the first, they're called my spooky sets, and what you get in it is a sock sack, a hundred gram, a hundred gram skein. Um, you get two pinky toes, which is a twenty gram mini. Um, and there's diff and depending on which spooky set you get, there's different color choices to choose from. But you get two of them. And you get a pumpkin uh, stitch marker or a progress keeper. I mean, that looks like that. This is kind of hard to do. Looks like that. So the first one, the Autumn's Harvest one, which is this one, you get this is the pro the sock sack. Got candy corns on the inside, drawstring, and then the colors, um, pinky toes to choose from on this one is tangerine, shadow, and gunmetal, which is an orange, black, and a dark gray. <coughs> the second spooky set I have is for Midnight Trickster, and the bag looks like this. Witches hats. It's got boo on the inside. Again, it is a drawstring sock sack. And the choices for um, many skeins on that one is tangerine, shadow, fig, and tart, which is an orange, black, purple, and uh, this kind of green color. You get to pick. You get to choose two to go with your set. So, I have those, and then I also did mini skein sets this year, this time around. So, these were a lot of fun to do. I think I'm going to do uh, Christmas ones as well. We'll just have to wait and see on that one, but that's the plan. So, the first one is, um, they are a seven-pack um, set of 20-gram minis. So, the first one is called Color Me Autumn. And I'm sorry for the crinkle. Basically, it's a set of fall colors. And to give you an idea, uh, we'll start over here on this side. It's straw, rust, grassy, fig, cloudy, cabernet, and cocoa. So, and I know the sun is really glaring that out. Um, there are pictures on my Instagram, Facebook, and Etsy shop if you want to see better pictures of what these colors look like. Um, these are a tonal, um, semi-solid, uh, dyed. Mostly tonal, though. And then the other one is like my Halloween one, and it's called Little Hellions. Little Hellions. And starting on this side, it's tangerine. Autumn's Harvest, Gunmetal, Fig, Midnight Trickster, Tart, and Shadow. <coughs> so you get uh, 20 grams of each one of those, which which breaks down to about 71 yards um, per skein. Per skein. So that is that, and that's pretty much everything that I've been working on. So. Um, I guess I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. Um, I would love to see what you all are working on. Um, feel free to comment in the in the comments down below. And also, we have a Ravelry group, um, Toe Creations Ravelry group. So be sure to join us and uh, join in the conversations. Which reminds me, there was a question in my Ravelry group. Let me go get that. Hold on, so I can answer it. It's loading. That awkward silence. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves while we wait.
If anyone else have the slowest internet connection in the world? <clears throat> we do. While we wait, you want to see my ducks? <laughs> Come on. Okay, it's still loading. So I looked it up on my phone, so I'll just try to see if I can remember it all. But um, there's three questions. It's from Amber from Ambi Crafts. I think I didn't even look at the name. <laughs> I should have. Anyways, <clears throat> um, her first question is, what is uh, my favorite color to crochet or knit with? And honestly, I don't have one. Um, it kind of just depends on what I'm working on. Um, I do like neutral colors like earth colors earth tone colors but then again I also like the bright colorful stuff um, for kids when I make stuff for kids I like to make it bright and colorful when I work or when I make stuff for adults I tend to do more subtle um, earthy tones so um, her other question that she had is which do I like doing better crochet or knitting um, Honestly, I like them both, and again, it kind of depends on what I'm working on. Um, blankets, I like crocheting blankets. Um, hats, I would rather knit a hat. I'd rather knit mittens. Um, but shawls, I've never knit a shawl, so I really don't know. <laughs> but um, I've been doing a lot of knitting here lately just because it's so new. Um, I taught myself how to knit back in January, and so... I'm still learning and that adrenaline of you know starting something new is still there and still very strong so I'm very um, not tempted but just uh, excited really to cast on everything and try everything and just to see what I like what I like to work on what I like to do and um, just trying it just trying it is so much fun so um, I've been crocheting for about three years now so <clears throat> just yeah it's just the aspect of doing something new that right now uh, I have been sorry I have been primarily knitting so hopefully that answers your question and your last question which still has not loaded on my computer is something along the lines of what tips <clears throat> would I give to someone thinking about uh, selling their crochet items? Um, that's a good question. Um, I w well, first off, I would say do it because you want to. Do it uh, if it makes you happy, you know? <laughs> Don't do it because you have to because then it, it turns into a job and then it's not really fun. You know what that means? So um, <clears throat> I would start small at um, maybe like a craft show uh, maybe through the church or schools do uh, smaller ones uh, I would look for a booth fee between free and 20 bucks <laughs> uh, I wouldn't really go anything over that um, some suggestions on entering a craft show that I would give is to one ask if there's anybody else that's going to be there with your type of craft whether it be crochet or knitting um, it probably wouldn't be worth your time to do a craft show if there are three other knitters there. Um, it'd just be like oversaturating the knitting <laughs> at, the, at, your, at the place and it would hurt your sales, it would hurt their sales as well. And so it, I don't think it would be worth your time. Um, <clears throat> so I definitely look into that. Um, look into if it's a theme show, obviously like the end of the month I'm doing a Halloween show so I'm not gonna have any Christmas related things at that show I'm gonna have more Halloween things fall things less Christmas um, kind of the you know red and green and cheery stuff um, just kind of do that and I also kind of decorate my booth in that fashion um, I have a Halloween tablecloth that I use it has like pump jack-o-lanterns and and stuff like that on it um, the craft show that I'm doing this weekend is a fall themed so my tablecloth has like leaves and you know <laughs> more fall more fall attire I guess 
Um, but besides that, I would say to have fun. Have fun. You have to go with a mindset that <clears throat> you may not sell anything and that's okay. That doesn't mean that your stuff isn't worth it because it is. It's so worth it. Um, I've done craft shows where I've sold a ton and I've done craft shows where I've sold nothing. And so <laughs> it's, it's just a hit or miss really. But you just have to have that confidence in yourself and your work and know that you your stuff is good no matter what people say or think and you have to know that everyone has an opinion everyone has an opinion and you're gonna have a customer like that who's gonna let you know that they're not gonna pay that amount of money for what you're selling or that oh my favorite I could do that myself you're gonna hear it and that's okay you know, it's just how you take that. Me, I kind of find it comical. I find it as an icebreaker, really. Um, you know, I have people come pick up my stuff and just throw it back on the table like disgusted and say like, oh, I could make that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's fun making it, isn't it? You know, or, or I'm not, you know, I'm not paying that much money. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> you know, just... Don't let it ruin your time or day. Um, craft shows are also a great way to uh, meet new other crafters, meet new people, um, maybe network. Um, a lot of a lot of people will trade. Like if you see something you like, you can trade. I know I've done that before. Um, traded hats and mittens and stuff for signs and pictures and whatnot. Um, so so yeah, start small, have fun. Um, another question is how much stuff to take to a craft show. <clears throat> really, I think that's more of a personal preference. Um, I know people get all mathematical with it and say like, well, I want to make this much money. And so you have to like, you know, triple that, quadruple it, you know, all this stuff. And no, I'm not, I'm not a figures person. I go by looks. I like my table to look full. And um, I don't necessarily want it to look empty. So I go by, I fill the table and then put a little bit more on so that when things sell, it, it doesn't look like a ghost town. You know, there's still stuff on there. Oh, and my mom always told me to every once in a while rearrange your table. Rearrange your, your, your setup. And so... Uh, it'll give like a new a new look to it and maybe draw someone in that they didn't see the first time around you know so uh, so yeah so hopefully that helps um, that's just the first things that come to my mind and um, yeah I am a total sucker for looking at other people's craft show tables <laughs> displays I don't know if that's kind of nerdy of me or not but um, if you are doing craft shows this fall, I would love for you to post pictures in the in the Ravelry group of your setup. Uh, maybe we can swap swap uh, display setup ideas. Really uh, help each other out in that aspect. So I'll uh, try to take some pictures of mine this weekend. So, okay, that's about it. If you want to follow me elsewhere on social media, I am. Toe Creations on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook. We do have the Ravel the Ravelry group, um, Toe Creations Ravelry group. So come join, join in on the fun. And I will see you in about a month. <laughs> All right, bye.